Hi and welcome. My name is Wendy LeBlanc Arbuckle. I'm the Director of Education for the Pilates Center of Austin in Austin, Texas. And I'm here as an instructor for Pilates Union. I'm really delighted to be with you and I've invited Jay Hoon to be here with me. Jay Hoon is a professional dancer and also a Pilates teacher here at the Pilates Center of Austin. And Emma has actually requested that I teach the Fascial Dog Flow Series to you because I, it, it'll, it's such a contribution for us here at Pilates Center of Austin and as I teach teachers around the world, it's really an amazing, simple flow for you to learn where you really deepen your understanding of flexion, extension, and rotation in a simple flow. So we're going to do that in just a moment together, and I'll show you the different components, phase one, phase two, phase three. They're very simple. But first I want to really uh, ground everyone. There's a languaging that I'm going to use, and so we're just going to share this with you for a moment. Uh, some of you may know the things that I've done over the years and how I've built a deeper understanding of what is biointelligence, what's the way of having a conversation with our body rather than trying to control our bodies. And so the three core body mapping or three core connections perspective is not a belief system. It's a way of inquiring into how we relate to gravity. What is that? Um, how do we, this is something that occurred to me when I first studied Pilates. I studied originally with Ramana and that was very valuable. And I stopped doing yoga. I was a yoga teacher uh, before that. Stopped doing yoga for four years and just did Pilates for four years to really understand what is Pilates. And within that time, I began to feel very held. And a, a feeling that I didn't have words for at the time. But uh, what I came to understand as I began to study is that I was actually overstabilizing. I didn't know that. So it's a very valuable thing to realize that you're creating tension where you don't need to have tension. And how does gravity support you to a let go of tension? So a, a, a question occurred to me as I felt that tension. What is core? Rather than a concept of core, what is core from the body's perspective? This is a very valuable question. And that's what took me to studying the vestibular system, studying how the spine, when we're moving and we're, and we're growing in the womb, how our bodies are formed and our spine moves in two directions as the spine is forming. This is a profound understanding because it really takes us into what is opposition when we're standing in verticality. So two directions of the spine is fundamental. And hands and feet as thousands of receptors awaken within us. It's how we sense our environment, how we feel where we are in the world as we're standing, how we sense through our hands what we perceive, our eyes, our ears, how we see ourselves in the world. This is our vestibular awareness. And from that understanding, I developed a deeper relationship with gravity with a sense of gravity, studying with profound teachers in the somatic world, and I became a structural integration practitioner. Deeply understanding, as Ida Rolf, the, the creator of structural integration, says, gravity is the therapist. What does she mean by that? Gravity supports us. So the understanding of how the lower body, which we're calling lower core, middle body, central core, and upper core relate to one another is through the gravitational field. And specifically, we're going to look at, and as Jay Hoon and I work together in the fascial dog, you'll see, I'll speak, to, uh, speak about the waterfall of the shoulder blades down the back. That's why this, uh, I've painted this beautiful 18th century anatomy uh, drawings, which represent what we're talking about as a waterfall. How the yellow, the, the shoulder blades relate to that waterfall, how they relate to the sit bone, tailbone, how that relates to the tripod of the foot. It's all about relationship and how that release down into, the, into your feet creates lift 
through the inner ankle, inner thigh, front of the pelvic floor, through the front of the spine, to the inner ear. So inner ear lift is actually not something you have to work for. It's actually something that occurs when you release the down. When we find the down the back, we engage and evoke up the front. So you'll see how I'll speak about that as we're moving through our fascial dog. So join us now. We'll be back in just a second. Hi, and welcome back. So now we're going to share the actual flow of the fascial dog flow series. And I wanted to also mention that this flow series was published in Pilates style under the article Core from the Body's Perspective, which Emma has on her website under her blog uh, page. And it was one of the most popular series in the 10 years of Pilates style publication. So we're sharing it because it, it really is something you'll love. Can't wait. Okay. So Jehoon is just going to place his hands. Remember we talked about the vestibular system. He's sensing weight, sensing the temperature. You're sensing your environment. And from there, you release, he's releasing his tail back. This is phase one, which you're really opening up to your fascial system, your whole fascial body, and sometimes called the perineural nervous system. You'll see more about this in the article that we have posted on uh, Emma's website. And notice how Jaehoon is releasing back. So show the difference, Jaehoon, between having your feet be too far forward and inhibiting your hips. And then take your hips back and have your tail tell your feet where to be. So now your feet are in front. And notice how his pelvis is releasing back. So he has let his spine elongate in two directions. Feeling feet, feeling the hands, and allow your inhale there. Exhale and just round your spine. This is where you find your hover. This is where you find your extended flexion. Solar plexus floats up. The waterfall of the shoulder blades relax down so your arms become more connected with your breathing spine. Right. Notice how he didn't lift his heels. Allow your inhale there. Exhale and float your heels up, but don't lift them. Keep your heels heavy. You're coming through the lift of the inner ankle, inner thigh, internal belly along the front of the spine to the inner ear. And inhale there. Exhale and release back. You won't believe how something so simple becomes so amazing. I do this all the time. It just opens your body tremendously. Opening to space. Allow your inhale, breath. Exhale, relax into your feet. As your heels go down, solar plexus floats up. Allow your inhale there. And as you float onto the ball of your feet, just pause for a minute, Jehoon, and just Pull your belly in and feel the difference between controlling the abdominals and then relax your abdominals and let your heels release. So the difference is pull your heels up and notice how that contracts your abdominals. Then release your heels down and what you'll feel is core coordination. You'll feel how your abdominals, is that what it feels like to you? Yes, there? I can feel the internal lift. The internal lift turns on. And you go forward, 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 just to where you feel the back of your arm water falling toward your shoulder blades through your feet. And then you inhale there, exhale, and you come back, releasing the heels. And knees go forward, sit bones release back. Good, one more. Press down, inhale, exhale. This is all phase one. Notice how he's feeling the hover. This is what knees off, knee stretches is all about. Feeling the heavy head, heavy tail, solar plexus floating up like a hot air balloon, opening your back. Inhale there, come away from your hands and release back, tail releases back, and sitting great. Now we're going to move to phase two. 
So we're going to do the very same thing as he comes forward, finding the hover. There's the release up, feeling that lift, feel the lift of the deep belly to the inner ear. And now instead of going back, he's going forward in phase two. Look up, evoking the spine, evoking core. Chest comes up, hips come forward, hip extension comes towards your hands. And notice his heels are reaching back. This is very important. That turns on the hamstrings, turns on the inner thigh, turns on the lift of the spine. Inhale there, then exhale, look down, soften the chest, and doesn't this look like upstretch? This is about the whole long stretch series, which is so powerful. It teaches your body so much about Pilates, yoga, your bar work will get stronger out of this. Feel how your heels reaching back allows your chest to lift, allows your head to lift. Waterfall the shoulder blades down the back, right, and now reach through your right heel and look left and reach through your left heel and look right. And now notice his hips are coming forward as his heel is reaching back. So your leg becomes more rooted, arms become more rooted to the spine, to the breathing spine, to your, to your extension. Very powerful. Then coming forward and round. Coming back, releasing back, and press down to your feet and come up to standing. Beautiful, yeah. So that's phase one, phase two. Now we're gonna do phase three, which has a different setup, which is a lunge. So what Dehun is gonna do is notice where does he want the chair, at, and let's actually start with your foot down on the floor first so you can show how that feeling of bringing the chair close to you, right, and that foot comes a little bit more forward, Yes, it allows your hip to open. That's it. Notice how his foot is not too high on the wall, and you can really feel the whole foot's relationship to his head. So here's the down the back related to the back heel, up the front related to the inner ear. So you spring off the back foot onto the front foot, spine goes forward, and then you reach back, and then let's actually stay level first with your heel. That's it, just like that. Good, and then go on the ball of your foot. Inhale to float up. Keep that hip lifted as you exhale that heel down. Yes, yeah, so you're creating space in this hip before you rotate into it. Inhale, lift up, and release. Very good, now rotate into that space you just created in that right hip. And this hand goes behind your back to really feel the rotation of your spine. Inhale, soften your knees. Exhale, feel your feet, feel the inner thigh, and feel the rotation of your spine. And right, and from there, feel the grounding through the right hand and how your rotated spine puts you into that grounding when that, now your arm can reach up from the grounding. You feel more connected, once again, to your spine, not just to the shoulder girdle. One of the other things that Ida Rawl spoke about in structural integration is how do we connect through the girdles, not just gripping and overstabilizing at the girdle. How does your leg get connected to your spine? How does your arm get connected to your, your spine? How does that connect to your shoulder blade to deep belly? And then that hand goes down and you rotate in the other direction. So now you're counter-rotating. This foot goes down, take the foot even lower, because you're looking for how can this hip not be, in, not be in, 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 um, inhibited. That will tell you where this foot needs to be. Beautiful, that's it. The other thing that's really interesting is being in this position, and if it's appropriate, you look down. Because you've got an outer spiral, which you can do in either direction, and there's your inner spiral of your head and spine, internal intrinsic support giving you a deeper internal massage. And then that hand goes down, and you bring this foot forward, you press down into your feet, and you come back up. Beautiful, yeah, and other side. So you'll see just the, the flow of how Jae-hoon is going forward and then reaching back. That actually allows his 
spine to support his foot as though he's reaching through the wall. Energy through your movements. Right. And then from here, inhale, soften your knees. Exhale and feel the lift from the inner ankle to the inner ear, which gives you more rotation. Right. Then that puts you into a connection of your arms through your shoulder blades to your spine. And you can notice how you can move your head just gently. It's a gentle movement. It's very good. Yeah. That hand goes down. You counter rotate. Right. And feel that reaching through the wall, feeling your spine moving in the other direction, counter rotating. And you feel how you can sense the support through your hands, through your feet to your center. So you're feeling core coordination and a fascial tensegrity through your whole body. It's really a remarkably beautiful feeling. It's what Pilates and yoga, well taught, are all about. A whole body awareness. And you can flow through this just so easily. Yes. Yeah. So what's your experience of being in your body after you've done the fascial dog flow? Yeah, it, um, the oppositional force and the rotation, the oppositional rotation really helps me um, connect with my inner, uh, connect my whole body mm -hmm. as a whole, mm -hmm. whereas um, it's easy for us to move our body in different parts. Mm -hmm. So uh, also, also having the tactile information under my hands, under my uh, feet, really gives me the information about how my hands are connected through my body to my feet yes. um, as a whole. Beautiful. Beautiful. And what you'll notice out of what we're speaking about, thank you so much, is it will really, really shift your understanding of being on the apparatus, working with the reformer, working with the Cadillac, working with the chair, working with a bar. It shifts how you are with what you're doing because you feel more in relationship, which is very different than doing something to something. So it's all about relationship, core as relationship, with gravity, ourselves, one another, and our environment. So thank you so much. It's been a pleasure to be with you, to be with you. Have fun. Please be in touch. Let us know if you have any questions, if you'd like to you know, explore something. We look forward to hearing from you. Thank you, Emma. Okay.